Who do you say Jesus Christ is? I mean, I, I suppose it depends on who you talk to. I don't know that there's a whole lot of people who would deny Jesus Christ. It's not whether he, he really lived or not, but who is Jesus Christ? I've heard people say he's a good teacher. I've heard people say he's a prophet. I've heard people say he's God. Who is Jesus Christ and whose testimony should we believe? For everybody argues that they have a reason for believing that he was a good teacher or a good prophet or God. Who speaks truth about the person of Christ? I mean, there is no question he lived. There's evidence of his existence. In fact, Secular historians have documented his birth and his death and, in fact, his resurrection. The question is, who is, who do we want him to be? Really is the question that we need to be asking. I don't believe that there is a doubt that he is who he claimed to be, and I don't believe there is a doubt that he is who the Bible claims he is. The problem is, the real issue is, who is Jesus to you in your mind? And that all depends on what it is that you want from life in order to define who Christ is. If Christ is that individual who convicts you of sin and shows you the need of a Savior, I'd be willing to bet that there's a very good chance that that Jesus is something else to you than who he really is. Because you don't want him to be that person who convicts you of your sin and shows you that there's accountability for the choices and decisions you make in life. And I think that the evidence far over far outweighs anything that the world has presented against it. I believe that the evidence demonstrates also that the Bible is the Word of God. And if the Bible is the Word of God, then it ought to be the, 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 the source to which we go in order to learn who indeed this person, Jesus Christ, really is. And that's essentially what we're going to do today. We are going to go to Scripture to learn who Christ really is. The first thing I want us to take from Scripture is found in John chapter 14 and verse 6. Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus claims to be the truth. Not a truth. The truth. And therefore we ought to believe Him because it is He who delivers us from error since He is truth the truth. The Bible says that when you come to faith in Christ, when you come to a place where you personally meet Jesus, you're meeting truth. And when you meet the truth, that truth, Jesus, sets you free. There is absolutely no lie, no falsehood, no error in Christ. He is honest, he is pure, he is truthful. 
all the time. What he speaks is right and holy and blameless because it is truth. And because he is truth, he is trustworthy. For there is no deception in Christ. He is the truth. When Christ says something through his word, I can bank on what he said, because what he said is true, since he cannot lie. You can trust Jesus, because Jesus is the truth. And until you come to that reality and accept that reality, you will never make it to the Father because it is only through the truth, through Jesus, that you come to the Father. He is the truth. And it is He who delivers us from error. The Bible also tells us in the same Gospel, chapter 6, in verse 32, Jesus said to them, I tell you the truth. It is not Moses who has given you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. According to Jesus, Jesus Christ is the true bread from heaven. Listen, we can feast on Jesus. We can sup with Jesus. And we can feast upon Him. Because it is He who makes us independent of earth's joy. He is the true bread. If you eat of that bread, you will live forever. It is incredible to me to find such an opposition from so many to the person of Christ. It is unreal almost, although prophetic, that so many people despise Jesus so much when all Jesus ever did for all of us was die on a cross so that we might be able to feast on the true bread from heaven and so that we might know the truth, the truth that sets us free. That is how good and strategic Satan is in mudding the minds of people and in deceiving people about Christ and about truth to the point where people will simply reject him without ever giving him even consideration. Another thing the Bible says about Jesus. We're staying in the Gospel of John again, chapter 15. In verse 1, listen to what the Bible says. I am the true vine, and my Father is the gardener. So we find that Jesus is the truth. Jesus Christ is the true bread of heaven. And according to this verse, Jesus Christ is the true vine. And as the true vine, I am to abide in him, because he's the one who enables me to bring joy to the Father through the fruit that I bear through my relationship to Christ. You know that every, the more you abide in the vine, the more you abide in Christ, the more you bear fruit. The more you bear fruit, the more you bring joy to the Father because you're doing precisely what it is that the Father wants you to do, and that is to abide in Christ so that you might be far more effective as a vessel in the hands of the Almighty God to accomplish His will. 
Listen, Christ, and I preached a sermon in which we looked at the different facets and ways in which God uses the Word of God depending on whom He wants the Word of God to minister to and what the circumstances of that individual are at the moment. Well, Christ is, depending on where we are and the circumstances we find ourselves, He can be something different in order to meet that need. Now, He never ceases to be, of course, God. He never ceases to be the Son of God. But He can be something different to us in order to minister to the particular need. He can be that true vine. He can be that true bread of heaven. He can be the truth, depending on what the moment and the circumstances are in our lives. The Bible also tells us, and now we're going to switch a little bit to the book of Revelation. And the first passage we're going to look at in the book of Revelation is found in Revelation chapter 3 and verse 7. I got a page that is sticking out here that is keeping me from getting to the one. Revelation chapter 3 and verse 7. To the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, These are the words of him who is holy and true, who holds the key of David, what he opens, no one can shut, and what he shuts, no one can open. Well, according to Jesus right here, Jesus is holy and true. Not only is he truth, but he is true, and he is holy. And we are called to be like him. He is the pattern of what the church corporately and we individually ought to be, holy and true. And the more we abide and the more we walk and the more we obey and the more we follow Christ, the more we become holy and true. The more we conform to the pattern of who we ought to be in Christ. Listen, there is nothing greater in life than to experience this Jesus Christ who came from heaven to give his life. You're never going to meet anybody, anybody like Jesus. Nobody you ever meet will ever be able to come close to giving you what Jesus offers you. Nobody you will ever meet will be able to give you life. Nobody you'll ever meet will be able to forgive you of your sins. Nobody you'll ever meet will be able to make of you a new creation. Nobody you'll ever meet will be able to reconcile you to the Almighty God. Nobody you'll ever meet will be able to love you the way He loves you. Nobody. You will never, ever meet anybody like Jesus. And all He does is wait for you to come to Him by faith. So that He might become that truth to you, so that he might be the true bread of heaven, so that he might be the true vine and the pattern of holiness and truth. The Bible also tells us in the same chapter of Revelation in verse 14 that Jesus is also the true witness. He says, To the angel of the church in Laodicea write, These are the words of the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the ruler of God's creation. Jesus is the true witness, and we are to listen to him because it is he who restores our souls when we get into that Laodicean lukewarmness. 
It is he who witnesses and serves as a testimony of God. It is he who reveals the Father to us. It is he who comes to share with us his own gospel, the gospel of our salvation. He is that true witness. And because he's all those things that we mentioned up to this point, it is because he is all those things that we can trust him and place our complete faith in him. Then going back to the Gospel of John, in John chapter 1 and verse 9, we're also told that Jesus Christ is the true light. Listen to what it says in John chapter 1 verse 9. The true light that gives light to every man was coming into the world. Jesus is the true, right, true light. And we are to allow him to illuminate us. He is to us the pillar of fire to guide us through the darkness of this world. He is the true light. And the one thing that I'm going to point out, the last one I have on my notes for this message, the one that everybody or every other religion denies is the one I'm going to mention right now. You know that there's only one faith that believes and preaches this last point I'm going to make. Every other religion in the world denies this one truth and reality about who Jesus Christ is. But this is a cardinal truth of the, of, of the faith, and this is essential if we're going to find salvation in Jesus. If Jesus is not this, this last thing I'm going to mention, then he's not any of the things we have mentioned up to this point. If Jesus is not this last thing we're going to discuss, then there is no salvation in him. He has no ability to save us then the resurrection was a fraud. There was no resurrection. And if he's not this last thing we're going to say, then we are all condemned and we will all pay for our sins. And for those of us who claim to be Christians, we are dead in our, in our transgressions if he is not this last thing we're going to mention. First John, Chapter 5 and verse 20. We know also that the Son of God has come and has given us understanding so that we may know Him who is true. And we are in Him who is true, even in His Son Jesus Christ. He, listen, is the true God and eternal life. Jesus Christ is God. And you know why He has to be God? Because a completely sinless, blameless individual was the one who would be able to make propitiation for our sins. It took God to die on the cross to save us of our sins for there is no other person in the world who was sinless and pure and blameless but Christ. For Christ had been conceived by the Holy Spirit and he was born without sin and he lived without ever sinning. He could be the only individual who can make payment for the penalty of my sin. Listen, heaven came down in human form so that his creation might crucify him on the cross for their salvation. Unbelievable. 
nonetheless true. It took God himself to take on human flesh so that he might be crucified and killed for our sakes. If he is not God, he is nothing else we have mentioned previous to that. But he is God. And the fact that he died and rose again from the dead proves that point. For if he had not been God, God's Justice and holiness would have never been satisfied, and Christ would have remained dead forever. I want you to think about that for one minute. You are a sinner condemned to hell with no hope of salvation. Therefore, God comes into the world in order to make payment for your sin so that if you willingly come to Him and by faith trust Him as your Lord and Savior, you might be saved. How much does God love you? He gave His life for you. Now that doesn't mean that God ceased to exist when Christ died. Christ died in His humanity and while on the cross, taking on the penalty of sin, he incurred the wrath of God, and God the Father forsook him, and we will never understand the real ultimate payment and cost to Christ. But we know that that which he suffered physically up to the point of death is insignificant by comparison to the cost that he paid as he endured the wrath of God because of our sin. Jesus Christ is God and salvation comes only through a personal relationship to him. Religion is nothing more than us attempting to get to God on our own way. Christianity is God himself reaching down to us. You'll never make it without Christ. And that is precisely why Christ said that no one comes to the Father but by him. And because He is the true God, we are to adore Him. He is to be the object of our faith, and He is worthy of all worship and adoration and praise and honor. That is why He is King of kings and Lord of lords, and that's why one day every tongue will confess Jesus Christ as Lord, and every knee will bow. Will you willfully bow now to him as you trust him, or will you bow to him on the day of judgment? That is your choice. You have free will. Father, we are so grateful for Jesus, for who he is, and for what he has done. We love you, Lord, and we do praise you, and we do worship you, and we do adore you willfully, thankfully, humbly. And it is in your name that we pray. Amen.